very good evening from the Standard Group Center here in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Tonight, ODM leader Raila Odinga has formed the narrative about a changing, the, changing the system of government into a completely different spin. While addressing the devolution conference in Kakamega, Raila said there is big need for formation of another tier of governance known as regional governments. He says, in his argument, is informed by the BOMAS draft that proposed a similar structure. Raila says, for the structure of devolution to work and as a matter of lasting solution to the problem posed by the sizes of the economies of devolved units, a rethink is inevitable. But is a three-tier system tenable given the wanton corruption and wastage already dogging the counties today? What's more, another tier of gov government will introduce another public wage bill burden even before the current bloated one has been addressed. The big story begins right now. I am Ben Kitili. Let's begin in the county of Kakamega where Mr. Odinga made the justification for this rather unexpected proposal. The Bomber's draft constitution divided Kenya into 14 regions, each made up of several districts or counties. The intention was to create units with a size and population that made them economically viable. To look at how to recover this original spirit. My proposal is that we adopt a three-tier system that retains the current counties, create regional or provincial governments, and retain the national government with a very clear formula for revenue sharing. So that is a big story tonight. To help us put this into perspective, I have with me Nandi Senator Samson Chalargay, who is be, will be joining us live from our Kisumu studio. Dr. Steve Oma, the Executive Director of Pomoja Trust, who is in the county of Kakamega, the venue of this year's devolution conference. And here in the studio, I have Dr. Alutalala Muhwana, as well as political and elections experts, Marcus Sagenga, will be joining me a little later on. Also with us tonight, of course, is our lead reporter tonight, Sophia Onuna, joining us live from the Nairobi Central Business District. Uh, Sophia, good evening. And uh, what can you tell us about Raila Odinga's uh, speech on devolution uh, today? Good evening, Ben. So as the counties turn five, this fifth annual devolution conference that's been held in Kakamega County has provided a platform for leaders and other stakeholders to take stock and give their views of how the counties are faring five years on. And today, we got to hear from former Prime Minister Raila Odenga. And as you mentioned earlier on, his is a proposal uh, to change the system further and have another tier of government introduced. He says... This was a proposal contained in the Bombers draft, which of course did not make it to the uh, final uh, referendum in as far as becoming Kenya's constitution. And he, his proposal is that for the counties as they are to be viable, then a restructure, a review must be done. And his argument is around retaining, of course, the national government, retaining all the 47 counties as well, but then adding these 14 regions. And he says this then would form easier economic blocks for the counties to be able to be formidable, to be more uh, resourceful, to help the people at the grassroots level because of the muscle and the kind of concerted effort uh, they would bring. He talked about it as biting the bullet, saying that it is time Kenyans uh, bite the bullet and take that tough decision to be able to see uh, that we can, as a country, we're reaping more fruit from devolution and from the system of governance. So introduce that extra tier and have uh, these 14 uh, systems of governance, which will be regions just under the county, under the national government. You have that uh, 14 regions, then the 40 seven counties. However, Ben, this is not something that is new in as far as seeing it in practice. Already five years of devolution, we've seen several counties coalescing, coming together. Let's begin, for instance, with the Mount Kenya and Aberdeer counties. We saw them in 2016 coming together. And in fact, 
the late Nyeri governor, uh, Gakuru, was a champion of this. He was a visionary. He talked about it a lot. And so some of the ways these counties, uh, formerly central province, could come together and take on these bigger projects, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's banking, you name it, that would centralize it in a sense and allow the, the counties that are closer and neighboring each other uh, benefit from those kind of services, saying that kind of pooling together uh, would be helpful. We've also seen this, and actually Raila Odinga mentioning it in his speech today, the 14 counties uh, the, calling themselves the Lake Regions uh, Economic Block. They're in talks and they're working towards uh, that kind of an economic setup where they can pull together. Ukambani as well in 2016, we saw the three counties, Makweni, Kitui, as well as Machakas come together and say they could work together for the betterment uh, of the people in that region. However, just earlier this month, when they held a meeting, the Machakos governor, Alfred Mutua, gave it a wide bath, arguing that in that particular meeting, um, it appeared to be a wiper agenda. It was not to talk about the unity and development of the people of the three counties. So you can see there some teething problems in as far as forming and bringing to a reality this kind of an economic uh, block. Uh, ben, the North Rift counties as well have been coming together. So the question then becomes, why entrench this in law if in in fact, with the system we already have, we are seeing these counties starting to pull together and find ways they can cooperate, find ways they can pull and work together for the betterment and, and, and bring up proposals and set up infrastructure, if you like, uh, to improve service delivery. So there are those punching holes into that, uh, saying that uh, it is not what Kenya needs. Now, however, uh, speaking to some analysts earlier about this proposal, Ben, they're saying this is a red herring from the former prime minister because there are those in his camp who have also talked about other proposals that were in that bombers draft that were around the executive just the other day. In fact, the leader of minority, that's Jim Sorengo in the Senate, uh, talked about a revisit of the executive, reintroducing the position of prime minister and having the two deputies. And so they're saying he's talking about this just as one of the ways uh, ODM and those that support this kind of thinking and structure and changes in the Constitution to build momentum on that conversation. And then there's another school of thought and other critics who argue that this would be creating some sort of cushion for, say, second-time governors who, after their second terms, you know, the next big seat would perhaps be what? CS, president, deputy president. So if you have this extra layer, then that creates another uh, sort of natural career progression, if I may call it that. So it's a way to sort of, like, give these people who are in county governments... Uh, an extra lane as far as governance, but as also you mentioned, Ben, that very big concern that is raised with this kind of a proposal is the funding of the same because you're talking about uh, more individuals being employed, staffing already at the two levels of government, the national government, the county government, the wage bill is huge. The wage bill, in fact, is causing uh, the, the country at the whole at the national level and the counties to backhaul in as far as the money that should be going to development. A, a lot of it, the bulk of it, is going to paying staff. So if you have this extra layer, you're talking about expanding an already uh, very bad situation for the country. So it will be interesting to see what kind of conversation this steers and whether in fact it would be one that would gain traction in the country, Ben. Indeed, very uh, key issues you're raising there. But Sophia, as, you, as we are reporting, of course, um, uh, this uh, proposal by Raila Odinga is based on that BOMAS draft, which divided the country into 14 regions, which had districts, which was the basic unit of devolution. We have seen uh, some of the other le NASA leaders, uh, Moses Wetangula and Musalia Mudavdi, and Raila Odinga himself, uh, pushing for... Uh, the executive for changes in the executive through a referendum uh, to have a parliamentary system of gov governance. Are we, we are seeing much talk of this um, uh, BOMAS draft. Is this a consistent message, uh, do you think, from the NASA leaders, even uh, against the backdrop of that now very famous handshake? 
In fact, uh, that is what uh, some of the political analysts I got to speak to earlier are talking about, that it's a concerted effort. You're seeing, you know, one of these leaders from NASA talk about this, this other proposal, so that at the end of the day, those who do not support it see it as purely just trying to create opportunities for leaders who uh, would want to continue to have an expanded platform in the event they do not get to the positions that already are in existence. So you're going to continue hearing this is what we understand uh, from those in opposition now. But you remember the likes of the deputy president, uh, William Ruto, and his lieutenants have been categorical. The constitution, the structure of government as it stands will remain. They do not support this. So the 2022 politics playing into this. And of course, at the end of the day, it's about the numbers, the numbers that support this kind of idea that can it at the end of the day make it uh, to be a reality. I remember speaking to Governor Kibuda and we spoke about this and he actually supported the idea of the 14 regions saying again they're more viable as economic blocks, Ben. However, his was not to add them to the already existing structures. His argument was collapse the counties from 47 to 14. However, he was very aware of the uphill task that would be because first you give people 47 counties and then you come back and tell them we want you to seed this ground and get into this more bigger population size if you like uh, kind of setup so even governor paranya when i spoke to him as well he said whilst it would be a good idea to collapse them it is hardly something that would actually come into effect ben many thanks sophia sophia on our lead report on the big story tonight giving us a background on which to build on on the program tonight. Let me now bring in my panel. Uh, I have with me uh, Samson Cherarge, the senator of the county of Nandi, joining us live from our Kisumu studio. Also have with me Dr. Steve Ouma, uh, Pamoja Trust, the executive director, who will be joining us live from the county of Kakamega. Here in Nairobi in studio with me is Dr. Alutalala Mukwana, a lawyer, as well as Marcus Agenga, an elections expert. Uh, very uh, good uh, to have you gentlemen with me in studio tonight. Let me start with you, Bona Senator. Uh, Raila Odinga in his proposal says that this is an effort to solve what he calls uh, the problem of the, the sizes of the counties uh, being economically unviable. Do you think the counties, the 47 of them, because of their sizes, are economically unviable? Uh, thank you, Ben, for hosting me tonight. I want to say uh, that it is not economically unviable for, for counties because the revenue they are collecting, if we ensure that we tighten the, the loose, uh, sea loopholes that uh, revenue get lost or they are not added, it can be sustainable, the issue of uh, spending and many other aspects. But I think uh, what I want to insist, what I read from that speech, is that they have realized that the executive uh, agenda or expansion of review of system of governance is not popular. So the only way is to hide maybe through the, uh, the through the reform or uh, increasing of the, the third tier because already we are struggling. I think uh, Sophia Anuna has indicated that we are struggling with uh, soaring high wage bill both in the county government and the national government. These are unsustainable expenditure at the end of the day. So in as much as you want to increase another level of governance, it means you are just creating more, uh, we are ballooning the, the, the workforce and the wage bill will, will always spiral out of control. But I think w when we agree, we, 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 we want to agree that this constitution is still very young. I agree there are some, some sections, the constitutional reforms and amendments will be done at an opportune time. But let us also allow this devolved system of governance to work because there is nowhere in, in any, anywhere in the world. When you introduce uh, another third tire, it means we are going back uh, to try and review also the system of governance because uh, at the moment there is this pure presidential system and I think the challenge, the, the right honorable prime minister, former prime minister was trying to introduce is to make sure that we go back to the discussion about the form of governance in this country because by the moment we introduce the third tie, it means also we will reform the executive and I think by extent that is what uh, he wants to ensure but I think the county governments we are having are economically viable. I think one of the challenges and uh, 
we have to agree is one of the corruption and maybe misplaced priorities. And I think the challenge we're having also is we have devolved some functions, uh, but not doing the costing. The many functions have been devolved, but the money has not been released to follow those functions at the county level. So our counties are economically viable. If we allow only to, the, we protect the revenue, we ensure the revenue loopholes are sealed. We ensure that uh, absorption rate, you realize, uh, Ben, that most of the counties, even as we talk, even as we come to the financial end of financial year, absorption rate is around 32% to 38%. Some of the counties also, when you look at the wage bill, it goes up to 37%, which is way above of the development uh, percentage. And therefore, these are challenges that if we, we, we eradicate, it means that we don't need to, to look at in, uh, introducing another form of regional government, because what will happen will be uh, opening more more issues. But I want to insist that the main agenda is to go to the to refer, to re restructure the governance of executive. And I want to agree with finally uh, with Sophia Anuna that this is a perception that is being created that they want to revolve the executive to create jobs for a few individuals. And I think that is the end result of this debate. So as a senator, just to, for the record of this republic whose uh, main function is to look out for the counties, you do not support this? I, I don't. Uh, I think we will we will cross that bridge because I'm saying this devolved government is system is still working. So there are still challenges and successes. Let us allow first to work so that we can review the process. And yesterday, I think the leader of majority in Senate, they said, let us also have external audit on this process before even we inform, so that we use statistics, we use audit to inform the decisions that we are going to make. If we just review without auditing where we are through this uh, form of devolved governance. It means we'll be just putting the cut uh, before the horse, which will, will not work, because we must look, let us, uh, sell, well, let us avoid also self-appraisal on the audit of former, but have external uh, systems to audit the, how it works, where there are challenges, where there are success, so that by the time we are sitting down, you know, because I will, not, I will not support for the record that you have asked, if this is, is sugar-coated or resident to reform the executive, because you had uh, there is a conversation that we should create a prime minister's, uh, prime minister's uh, post and many other, in, and expand the table of executive. And I think that is where this conversation is going. It is not even about evolution. It is about to reform the system of ensuring the table of executive. We create more spaces in executive so that we create more people who sit at that table to create more job opportunities for the few individuals. Bring in Dr. Atulala Mokwana, lawyer who is with me here in Nairobi. Uh, Dekhtari, thank you for joining us. Um, do you support this proposal by Raila Odinga for a three-tier system of governance? The Senator Fernandi says this is an effort to introduce uh, changes to the executive governance system um, uh, through the back door. What's your take? Um, thank you very much, Ben, for the invite. Uh, it can actually be anything. It can be what the senator is saying. It can be what uh, Honda Raila is saying. It can be virtually anything. I say so, Ben, because what perplexes me is how politicians in this country decide how to set the agenda for the people of this country, how they should think, when they should think, what they should be talking, and when they should be talking. Ben, the handshake is about a month or so. Prior to the handshake, there were issues that were raised, and most of us hoped that once this handshake comes into fruition, those issues will be the agenda that is being discussed in this country. Suddenly, we are now being told, the suggestion is being thrown away, that now we need to have a three-tier government, national government, regional government, and then the county government. And I keep asking people who are proposing changes to the constitution, what percentage of our katiba is not good? And what percentage of our katiba is good? And in the fora that I have had the privilege to address, the answer has always been 90% of this constitution is good. And my next logical question is, how optimally have we used the 90%? And the answer many times is, not even 40% of it has been utilized. So in my view, Ben, the question that we should be addressing is, where has this suggestion come from? What informs this suggestion? And I'm afraid our politicians, again, are finding a way to set the agenda for Kenyans come 2022 and find a way of sweeping what has been bedeviling us prior to the handshake beneath the carpet. First and foremost, 
when you talk about economic viability or non-viability of the 47 counties, on what research is this based? Secondly, when you talk about forming regional blocks, a wonderful economic idea. Economic blocks need not alter the substratum of the formation of the government. And therefore, when we say that the 47 counties are not viable and that it is better off having economic blocks and for that reason we need to collapse the 47 counties, we are being led into a room that we do not know who the occupants are and a room in whose debate we do not know who is leading the debate. All right, Dr. allow me to ask you this. You've talked about uh, what percentage, 90% uh, is good, there has been that talk, and only 10% is what can be said as not good. Do you think, in your view, that chapter 11, the chapter on devolution, is one of those that is not good, as it is? Look, in my view, Ben, devolution in this country as a seed was, was planted in 1963 upon independence when a section of the politicians opted for centralism as juxtaposed with federalism. What we have today as Majimbo in chapter 11 is the best gift that the Almighty ever gave us because centralism was suffocating this country. With the coming of devolution, alhamdulillah, even the poorest of these countries is receiving what they never imagined. Garissa is beginning to have roads. Lodo is beginning to have hospitals. Kakamega in the villages, now we are having maram roads where we, have, we had only parts. So in my view, devolution is the best thing that happened to this country. However, the cost of devolution is informed by extraneous reasons. The wage bill must be seen together with the corruption bill and the bad governance bill. And if these are the issues that are making our politicians now tell us that the 47 counties are not viable, let's now go to a regional block, then that is fallacious and that is not very honest of our leaders. All right. In my view, we must build up on the devolution, we must build up on the 47 counties, we are only five years, where have we gone wrong before we start another system of government? That Let's, is my question. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Let's bring in Dr. Steve Ouma, Executive Director of Pomoja Trust, coming to us live from the county of Kakamega, uh, the nucleus of this year's devolution conference. Dr. Ali, thank you for joining us. Um, what's your take on the comparison to the BOMAS draft, uh, this proposal by Raila Odinga? Do we have the wrong format of devolution? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to the discussions. I was, uh, I'm participating in the conference and I was there when the Right Honorable gave his remark. Uh, let me start by saying that the question of whether we need 47 counties or a smaller number is an old question. So it is nothing, in my opinion, to do with the so-called handshake. In fact, the BOMAS draft had suggested 14 regions, which were then to be sort of the counties. This 47 question just came when the committee of experts in Ivasha wanted to accommodate ethnic interests. So the biggest thing around this formulation are two. One, the question of national cohesion. And two, then, comes the issue of economics. Let me speak to this question of national cohesion. You see, the 47 counties are essentially ethnic, assumed ethnic boundaries aligned to some political boundaries. So that you have a place like um, uh, counties in Luo Nyanza, which you can call Luo, Luo land counties. Then you have others in Western Kenya you can call Luya land counties. So the idea of merging them together is basically moving away from that ethnic logic in constituting the way our society is organized and governed. And that's a noble cause. And that is indeed the essence of devolution. So as far as uh, reformulating and going back to BOMAS, I think is a welcome idea. But I also think that the two panelists did not pay attention to other issues that Right Honorable uh, Prime Minister said vis-a-vis -vis the devolution question and the counties. He also talked about... Mr. Doctor, allow me to ask you this. Eh? In, the BOMAS, in, the, in that BOMAS draft, the role, supposed role of these 14 uh, regional uh, governments was to 
coordinate implementation. Can't the 47 counties implement devolution? And if they, there is need for more counties for the economic viability to increase, what about the economic blocks that has, have been formed by various uh, counties? No, first of all, the issue here is not about economic blocks. Let me give you a small snippet of history like my uh, lawyer colleague also gave you. In, 19, for, in 1963, at the Lancaster House, Cardu took to the table 42 regions. Cardu took 42 regions. Those 42 regions were ethnic-centered boundaries. The 47 counties are just the same logic of 42 uh, ethnic boundaries plus another uh, five. So the problem here is not economics. The problem is that the way those boundaries are delineated does not make governance sense. They only make ethnic political sense. So beyond economic region formulation, which is a new formulation we are now trying to bring in on board, the first problem is that ethnic boundaries as we have today is a problem, undermines the very idea of devolution. Now, to build a rationale and to strengthen the argument, the Prime Minister linked this return to Boma's draft with the question of regional blocks. And he merged that also with the question of the old so-called regional development authorities. And he argued that those old regional development authorities need to be merged with the emerging ideas of regional blocks. So he was just saying that in my opinion to give it a rationale. However, if you go to BOMAS, BOMAS was suggesting that there ought to be 14 counties. And BOMAS developed that based on governance logic, economic logic, and cohesion logic. So right. going back to that is not about, in my opinion, creating a new tire. It's about creating a governance model that has a logic that can support devolution. All right, thank you. Let's now bring in Marcus again, elections expert. Uh, thank you, Marcus, for joining us. Daktari there in Kakamega supports this proposal by Raila Odinga. Uh, do you think that it is time to go to that, uh, to, to, to introduce a third tier of government? And uh, the Senator Fernandi did allude to the fact that this is a continuation of the, the NASA agenda, that uh, who, who, who seem to believe that time is nigh to reconsider the BOMAS draft. What is your take on this? Thank you very much for having me in the studio. I'd like to join my colleagues uh, by indicating that first, a country must continuously reassess its, the viability of its systems and structures. So the debate, as is presently being discussed, is not removed from that parameter. So I think one of the fundamental questions that I think we need to have is to address the issue. Are our structures and systems of governance as envisioned in the spirit of the law serving the interests of Kenyans or not? That is the fundamental question we need to deal with. Having dealt with that question honestly, and then we ask the same, second questions. Why are they not working if they are not working? Is, it the, is, is the problem a legal problem? Is it a, an ethical problem? Or what is it? Then based on the answer we received to this second question, then we propose changes that would bring us to where we want to be. And I see nothing wrong myself if we interrogate these questions and come up with honest answers. If the country thinks that a three-tier system of governance will suffice or be more viable, then we would then make that direction. But I think fundamentally, having taken stock of our country, we know that we have also institutionalized a number of bad practices of governance. Corruption is a big thing today in our counties. And so even if we moved even to a fifth tier of governance, then unless we solve critical problems that continue to affect our governance models, we won't move anywhere.
All right. Thank you so much. Uh, let's take a quick commercial break here on the broadcast. My guest, my panel tonight, Samson Gerard Gay, Senator Nandi County, Dr. Steve Ouna, Ouma, Executive Director, Omoja Trust, Dr. Alutala, Alutalala Mohwana, lawyer and elections expert, Marcus Agenga. The big story tonight, the proposal by Raila Odinga to introduce a third tier of government. This is a big story. Stay with us. This is KTN News.